All right, uh, southwest tip of Iceland uh, on the Reykjanes Peninsula. This is about as far south as you can go. This is Valanukar. Um, you can see some folks up here on this prominent and scenic ridge of the big deep sea out there. And then there's a lot going on in this location, so I want to try to walk you through it. Um, let's start with a few videos ago, we talked about these landforms called uh, tuyas, so or tindars. So basically, what happens when the volcano is erupting beneath ice? Um, you can get all this, the same features for the most part uh, when it's erupting under the ocean as well. Um, and this is a location that's been interpreted as both subglacial and submarine and so there's there's two competing interpretations on that without any sort of clear resolution um but let's go back to the the diagram real quick and so we were at a location on a prior video where we were able to see both the uh, lapilli tuff so when the volcano is erupting beneath the water but there's not enough water on it to keep it from erupting, it becomes fragmental and pyroclastic and, and explosive. Um, and so this really probably should show, I guess we'd add it right here, show some sort of, you know, this stuff sort of just being thrown out a little bit. Um, and then that of course ultimately builds up a cone that then gets capped by, once it's above the water level, gets capped by what we call subaerial basalt, basically your, your run of the mill basalt on land. And so we've seen that the top two layers of this sort of three layer sequence, we've seen the subaerial basalt on top and the volcanic breccia or the tuff that forms in the middle. Uh, but I wanted to show you a little bit of what the bottom stack can look like. And so what we have over here, and I went over there, but I think it's better from a distance, um, is we have some beautiful pillow lavas. So hopefully we get a little bit closer here. You can see some of these just fantastic rounded shapes in, in the rock there. The yellow is an alteration product called pelagonite. And so that's common in these pillow lavas or anytime water is interacting with the glassy nature of the basalt is it kind of uh, chemical, chemically reacts and can form this yellowish material. We can actually see down in here, some rounded or oval shapes uh, that are parts of the pillow lavas as well that don't have as much, if any, pelagonite. But basically from here uh, all the way up to about here, this is all one big stack of pillow lava or pillow basalt. Again, indicative of uh, volcanism taking place beneath water. Could be the ocean, the ocean's right there. So that seems to be a pretty good candidate. But we also have to remember that at the time this eruption took place, and I don't have the date with me off the top of my head, um, see the ocean sea level may have been at a location a lot further offshore. So had this uh, event taken place during glacial times, sea levels many miles probably offshore. And so this could be a subglacial uh, eruptive process. So there's the pillow lavas at the bottom. And then remember in our model, we also talked about how that transitions as you move up into uh, volcanic breccia, lapilli tuff. I know we're using a lot of words there, but it's all the same stuff. It's fragmented rock layers that are being explosively emitted. And notice you lose the pillow lavas right about here. So if we walk over to this prominent outcrop, just to verify that, so we can see actually pillow lavas right here in the slope. So let's look right above them and see what this material is. And if it's sort of following this model, and again, the model is very cartoonish and very generic. There can be lots of variations uh, and subtleties in there as well. But yeah, we can see here is class of material. Definitely looks more like a, a volcanic breccia in here. And if we move up here, yeah, so I'm standing on, they're a little harder to see because we're up close and personal now, but these are the pillow lavas, the rounded structures. Oh, here's some beautiful ones right here. So there's a couple beautiful pillow lavas. And then that would represent, and then as we grade upward, we lose the pillow lavas 
and it becomes more dominated by little clasped brecciated material in here. And so that effectively would mark the junction between uh, when the pressure was great enough to keep these things from erupting explosively and then at this point as we move above the pillow lavas into the, the volcanic breaches then it's behaving more explosively presumably again because it has less water sitting on top of it less pressure so it's able to erupt explosively those are beautiful i'm glad i walked over here i hadn't seen those before nice little four pillows in a row right there um, and then just to complicate things a little bit we've got this hillside here uh, this big butte over there where there's some folks on top and then this bay and this has been interpreted as a grobin which would be mean that there's faults on each side that have down dropped the middle uh, and that may be true i can't see any evidence uh, that would contradict that but nonetheless this valley has been filled in by younger pohoihoi lavas you can see some of the nice ropes here on these surfaces and these pillow lavas or excuse me these pohoihoi lavas these smooth ropey basalt flows were erupting from this line of fissures and spatter cones along the horizon to the west just above the cars uh, and i think these shoot the age i think these were like 800 to 1200 years old something like that but you can see all those stacked up um, on top of each other so a lot going on here geologically but a really cool uh, wonderland and so i guess maybe the point is is that when you think of iceland and think of the volcanoes here there's really so much diversity even with it erupting mostly the same magma type basalt there's just an incredible amount of diversity depending on what it's erupting under and through changes in viscosity and temperature uh, slight changes in magma chemistry and then sitting on top of this pohoihoi we'll come over here to some nice ropey surfaces here um, is a little bit of bedded tephra so uh, ash and lapilli from some younger eruption so you have right here evidence for a eruption underwater that produced pillows volcanic breccia and then a subaerial eruption just a typical eruption of pohoihoi basalt uh, followed by some more explosive eruption don't know exactly what source this would have been of uh, erupting ash and lapilli little pieces of basaltic material sitting on top of it so a uh, tremendous area uh, this is definitely a place you should come it's maybe half an hour from the keflavik airport um, very accessible there was a tour bus here a bit ago looks like those folks are up at the top so hope you're enjoying these videos these are just super fun to make and uh, i'm learning things as i go um, following a field guide and some of the places i visited in the past so hope you're enjoying these thanks